Hey, this is JC. I just wanted to uh, give a little breakdown of how I made my short and how you could do this as well. If I can do it, you can do it. Just lean on uh, Epic Games content in the marketplace for almost all of it. And it's actually not that crazy. You could do this. So check it out. Uh, I'm going to break it into three parts. So I'm going to talk about getting in your assets and then how to deal with all the animation. And then finally, lighting effects and editing. So check it out. It's not that bad. You could do this. Get inspired. Let's go. So we have three characters on the short. We have MetaHuman Male, MetaHuman Female, and the Kite Boy. So they are all available from the Marketplace. So what I did is, in the Marketplace, created a project which was just this uh, face AR sample and then migrated him across to my project. And then same with the, if you go to free Epic Games content, You'll find the MetaHumans uh, link to get the project for both MetaHumans. Currently, it's just those two that are available. So you take them as you get them until the whole MetaHumans creator tool comes out where you can mix and match all sorts of stuff. But for now, it's just those two that are available. And same thing, made a project and then migrated into uh, my project. They come fully rigged and all the face stuff working. The slight disclaimer on the boy He's actually, we'll get into this more in animation, but there's a headless character than a, uh, basically just a locator used to put the floating head. You can see the head's just floating there. So the AR kit Kite Boy doesn't have a full body that's uh, rigged and ready um, for mocap to land on. So it's kind of done in two separate pieces. This is a good little hack that Jim Ryder, a previous fellow, uh, showed us how to do. So that's for Kite Boy. The other two characters are pretty much plug and play though. Let me undo the snapping head. So that's where I got my two characters. The car I bought off of Sketchfab with a use license and then the environments. So we have five different uh, locations. So this is the first location that starts out on the shore. This is the the road environment. So I have a couple maps that I have here. So this is the road, which the asterisk means I just changed something and it wants to save it, but that's fine. And so just to show what this environment, uh, this environment is, let's get out of my camera so I can move around. So this environment I may have purchased from the marketplace. I think it was just called, yeah, I think it's called uh, Country Roads. Let me take a look here and see. Um, so this is open, oh, here it is. Oh yeah, so it's the Country Roads from Brushify. Uh, I think I paid 30 bucks for it, which is fine because I didn't want to create all of this myself. So I really just needed a road and, you know, so that you can see them driving along. And it came with a road. Everything you see in here came purchased. So let me show you what that looks like in the launcher as well. Um, what was that? Country road. Yeah, so I just bought this. Oh, it's only 20 bucks. So 20 bucks for this particular environment. This Brushify has a bunch of different environments. So definitely 20 bucks well spent for me. And then let's look at our other environments that we have our other locations. So that is the first sequence and I collected all of my uh, sequences here in folders. So that is the road sequence. That's the first place. Then we get to Cadillac Ranch. So the Cadillac Ranch map is also here in map. So opening that up and I don't want to save my changes. So this is the Cadillac Ranch map which is really just uh, another environment what was this one? I think I got this one. I think this was free on the marketplace. Just a, um, a bunch of locations. Let's take a look really quick just to confirm. Where did I get that from? And Canyon? Uh, yeah, one of these Canyon landscapes. Oh, okay, maybe I paid 30 bucks for it. It, uh, again, 30 bucks to save hours of modeling something is totally worth it for me. So yeah, so I grabbed, I guess, a landscape here, and that is uh, in this particular level. And so there it is. If I pull way back, um, you'll see it's, it's pretty modular. It's just that big chunk out there and another chunk here. 
another chunk here and then this land of course you know you get far away and you can see the tiling but whatever it's fine and uh, the cars are just um, copies of the same car that I swapped out some uh, material settings for oh uh, one thing to note as well asset wise kind of I'll talk about it in lighting but uh, you see here ultra dynamic sky that was something I also purchased from the marketplace and that is a sky lighting it's good for exteriors a kit that uh, ultra dynamic sky it's probably around here somewhere okay right here so yeah that was uh it comes with you put in the time of day you put in the cloud densities you want um you know they have a uh, blueprint driving a ton of this stuff um so yeah it was pretty handy you can come up with all this it's got a moon it's got a sun you can change the texture on the moon it's pretty ridiculous definitely something it was a drag and drop situation i hardly had to change anything which was quite nice just intensities and direction and such which was like i said pretty handy again money well spent for time versus money uh i needed more time than money so that is the uh, next location that's the cadillac ranch then we go to uh where do we go after that he finds the car then they go to the house so the house, the entire house location was also found on the marketplace. And that was, if you go to free Epic Games content, this covered actually a few locations, a couple locations for me. There was this, uh, I guess there's some game called Edith Finch. And the house grounds is what all the exterior shots are from. We'll tour that in a moment. And then also while I'm right here, uh, the Edith Finch twins room is where uh, one of the um, shots takes place oh and also the which one was it it's another of the edith finches must be on the next page uh, the living room with the fireplace uh this one here house and commons uh is where the interiors that aren't the bedroom take place so let's take a look at those i put those into um actually they come in their own maps so that was pretty handy it takes a while to explore and figure out what comes in each of these but uh, let's start with the grounds first that's in the order of the short so I'll go to the maps folder again all this came in that project and I just migrated it into my project here so go to maps and open up my map of the grounds so this came all loaded in here and there's the house and uh, there's the boy um, yeah it's pretty much all exterior and it's got a you know it's, what's nice is you know look at those trees they're like moving in the wind I didn't have to do anything they just came that way so handy and yeah so most of the action these shots takes place as you've seen the short hopefully in this area so that's the exterior showing the uh, the grounds then the interior let's look at the first Floor, right that would be next uh, if we go into the maps folder here first floor map this has this is the interior of the living room and let's see look at the, look at the memory on this thing cranking along I got 64 gigs so I'm not worried about it, but nonetheless it uh, starts getting a little chuggy plus I have the uh, just a quick little thing to show if you do have performance issues what's nice is we set up this little thing so if I select this guy right now his LOD is zero which is max but I can set him to three so he goes low res turn off his hair sim turn off his visibility and then that starts lightening up the scene same with her I can select her set my lower my LOD and also turn off her hair uh, didn't seem to make a dent here at all but maybe it'll catch up eventually uh, maybe it's more a frames per second thing that makes a difference that's a this is a big thing when playing with Unreal, it's all about, oh, what's your frames per second? Um, and then, so yeah, now it's super snappy though. And let's see, we'll talk about the fire later in the later one. But so here's the house. I mean, it's a pretty big location. You know, you got all this through here, all this through here. I was going to do a shot in the kitchen earlier, but decided not to. So yeah, so a lot of a lot of you get for free in this case, which was nice. So that is another location. Next, we have the twins room. And the twins room in the maps folder here is where we have 
the nighttime scene. Load that up. So here's that, and so all my shots really take place in this corner. And the final location, oh, it's back outside. So that's all the different locations um, I used, and again, all that came pretty handy from the, uh, the marketplace, all for free. All right, so that is, uh, that's, that's kind of the overview of the assets that were used in the short. Actually, I said all for free. All for free work-wise, some required a little bit of payment, uh, but to me that's free enough versus having to make any of it myself. So yes, not all of it was quote free, but definitely felt free because I could just grab it and use it. So quite handy. So the animation, there were a few different methods used. Let's look at, uh, let's open up one of the sequences here while we're here in the bedroom. Let's open up a, let's open up an older, oh, let's open up this one. All right, so here we have uh, this shot near the end. And the character animation in this case, as far as the body goes, you'll notice here uh, you have control over the body and you have control over the face. So you can actually capture them independently, which is nice. The body animation here uh, is just some mocap and of just kind of squatting. And let me just hit play so you can see what he's doing. So it is not doing, just kind of sitting, squatting, nothing too crazy. So uh, that was um, a lot of the situation was using mocap. A uh, quick overview of how that worked. Uh, it was done with the XN suit and then exported as FBX and then run into Maya to add a, a little bit of a, a little rig of sorts. So for example, where's one that has a little motion? Uh, oh, actually, let's go back and see. This was uh, mocap 63. So if I go in my little library, so these are all imported motions uh, output from Maya. Did I say 63? Um, so this is the import. Sorry, it's a little slow getting in here. All right, so you got just the character. It's not the most exciting uh, example here. Let's look at um, what else we got in here. What's he doing in this one? Come here, little stick guy. You driving? What's he doing? He's talking on the couch. I, I'm, I'm not really sure what that shot was. Anyway, so here's oh, this is a little better. So again, this is off the XN suit, tagged into um, run through Maya just to have a mesh put on it, so I could have it brought in here. Because then what you do is you retarget this animation to whatever character you want. And the way you do that, let's take a look at that. So if I wanted to send that animation to my metahuman here, I would, uh, there's setup you gotta do for this first, but I would right click, retarget, duplicate that animation and send it to, in this case, the metahuman skeleton. Um, you can't, it, the mesh doesn't preview, um, but it's there. So this is taking that stick man animation and matching it onto the metahuman. So this part's easy, you just click the button. The part that takes a while to set up is the uh, retargeting. So this is the skeleton for the stick man. So if I load him up and look at the, open this up a little bit. It'd be nice if I could resize these, but um, I go full screen at least. So here what you do is this is the uh, rig that came from the XN suit and got attached to the skeleton. And then this is, now when you see the, the word rig, don't think of it like a rig rig, think of it like a translator kind of. And so they have this built-in one called humanoid. So this is the standard middleman, and then I tag each of, uh, these are the different parts of my stick man. So say, uh, you know, the, the common use is root, but my stick man was called reference. So then I just have to go through and flip all of these switches based on my um, different joints to match the common humanoid settings. And these same values will be matched in similarly to the uh, metahuman. We'll look at that in a sec. 
All right, so all of these get mapped here. And if you want, you can actually save out that mapping so you don't have to do it multiple times. Then if you need to, sometimes you have A post, sometimes you have T post, so sometimes you need to come in here and, you know, tweak your, whoops, not there, but, you know, you grab your, grab your proper uh, joints and move them to match the other character. So let's look now at the metahuman um, skeleton. So what I can do for that, a uh, quick way is, well, semi-quick. If I go here to the body, the body is using this mesh. And this mesh, if I right click on it and go to skeleton, find skeleton, this is the skeleton of the metahuman. So double click on that. So here you see this is the skeleton of the metahuman. All same thing had to happen. Now in this case, because it's their own, they match, they happen to match exactly uh, the humanoid naming convention. Uh, because that's that's their version as well but any other character you would probably still need to do this kind of uh, redirect um, or retarget so it's again think of it like as a translator right so you got from the stick man to this and then from this onto the target of this character and so here's the stick man um, or the metahuman it doesn't have the uh, mesh on by default so whenever you need to see it but you usually don't need to see it but you know I just come in here and turn on the different pieces if needed that's just to show the skeleton and the retargeting so then uh, once you retarget to the animation it works on the character and then you can assign the animation here in the um, in the sequencer and for the face uh, let's see for the face it was pretty much all using you know what I did have okay we'll talk about this as well so you see this animation here is bringing in the mocap but what's nice is say there's some minor tweaks you want to make uh, maybe his head I think I adjusted his head a little bit to look in a certain direction because the mocap wasn't exactly what I wanted so what you can do is uh, I had right clicked and edit with the FK control rig so what that allows you to do is and I also, once I added it here, I also checked additive, which allows you to add on top of what the motion capture was doing. So for example, here you can see there's a lot of controls. Um, can I arrow back up here? There we go. So here I was able to set some keys on the head rotation to put it exactly where I wanted based on um, to correct for what it was doing from the motion capture. Right, so if I, I, I would delete them, but I really don't want to hose this. I know I can undo, but you never know. So anyway, just trust me. I added some keys here to make some changes to the head, but any part of the rig, you still have access to uh, for modifying on top of what your mocap might be doing. We'll get into control rig itself in another shot, so you can see how that works. But this is when you want to do some additive uh, work on top of motion capture works pretty handy and then continuing on to talk about the face So here you'll see there is a face animation that has been added The face animation comes from the iPhone and let's see this one's called son. I'm sorry So if I go to my well, yeah, let's do this. We'll come in here. Let's look for uh, Son and so here's the raw recording of the, oops, let me turn off the bones here. There's a lot of bones. All right, so here's the result captured from the iPhone and put on the character, which was actually really easy to do. I'll, when I get back over, I'll show you what to do. And if you need to see it on your other character, you can do that as well. Just swap out uh, what mesh the motion is using. So it shows you, you know, all your waveform. These are all the controls that are being driven through the, um, through the iPhone app, which is nice. And then you apply that uh, onto the character's face here. You know, I could swap this out if I right click on it. What's nice is you can go to your properties. There were a couple shots where I actually messed with the play rate a little bit just to tweak it. And you can also trim it and slide it and move it all around. So you can do quite a bit of custom work. And you can also here, if you want, trade out and put in a different one to test out a few different ones. And so 
On occasion as well, what's nice is you could also edit on top of the face animation. So maybe you needed to change your eye line in the end once you got it in the shot. I could right click, also do edit with control rig, or in that one did I bake to control? I may have done, I may have done bake to control rig, which then takes the animation and converts it back into a fully functional rig that you can then modify. I'll, I'll show that when I get to another shot. I think that's what I did for the eye target one I was messing with. So this is when you just need to add on top of it. This is when you want to bake it out onto an actual rig that you can modify here inside um, Unreal, which is, was really handy. All right, and then uh, Kite Boy, what we're talking about animation was kind of mentioned before a little bit. Um, his case was a little unique, but the concept was similar in that this is his body animation. So that's just named joints and blends or was that his head? No, sorry, this is his face animation. And his body animation is somewhere else. Here's his body animation. Again, it's just because he kind of had to be hacked together. Little Edward Scissorhands, his, his head and his body are um, separate assets linked together by a common, um, really just a locator being used here. So just setting up a little parenting hierarchy there. And I think that's kind of it as far as animation using motion capture. Now on one shot, I used just the plain old control rig, I think. Did I ever end up replacing that? Let me take a look. Um, that would have been in the living room, which is on the first floor. And maps, come here, you, oh, ah, uh, ah, this you gotta keep your eye on. If you ever use the filters, you gotta make sure you take them off, otherwise you won't see your stuff. So we'll go to the first floor here. Uh, I'm not gonna save what I did there. And so him sitting on the couch, let me load up the shot for that. That was living room, living room one. So here we have, okay, so yeah. So here's a case where I just use the control rig because it wasn't anything. You're just sitting there kind of doing nothing, just listening, right? So. Uh, here's the here's the camera angle. So if I hit play, you'll see, uh, you know, he's just nodding his head, really. So and then I needed to pose him all casual, like uh, putting his foot up, because he's a casual kind of guy. And let's see the um, control rig. Let me get a little closer to him so you can see that. Come here, little guy. Still getting used to these controls after six weeks. There we go. Sometimes I use the Maya controls, sometimes I use the game engine controls. It just depends what I feel like, I guess. Um, so, pull back a little bit more from the side. All right, whatever. And then, so when you have the character that you want to work with selected and you go to its, notice how I don't have mocap on this one, like I did on the previous one. I have this metahuman control rig. If I select that, then you get to use uh, the rig however you want. Um, and you know, do stuff to them. So what I did on this one, I think if I can find, where's the head? There is a, there it is. Here's the head control. So all I did is set some keys to make his head nod up and down. You can see his, his head moving around there. So just hit the old rotate tool, drop some keys in there, and then he's doing his amazing head motion. So that was really it. All I had to do. Uh, and then at the first frame, I had to pose him because otherwise he just comes in T-pose. So, you know, it's just, it's just like using a rig, grab whatever part of the character. Boom, boom, you know, you got to move his foot around. They got IK controls hooked up here. So then you can play. Oops. Uh oh, I broke it. No, it's fine. All right. So, uh, yeah, watch that auto save. And it also has auto key turned on right here, so I gotta be careful here. Uh, so that is using control rig, which, you know, that's pretty handy. If you're a real animator, you know, I'm not, uh, but you can use this rig to fully animate them if you want. And uh, if you don't have a motion capture handy. Oh, one other, okay, that was the other thing to talk about. Uh, if I didn't use the XNs capture, a lot of the shots I could get away with just walking. Um, there's a few different um, animation cycles that I used. Uh, there was a kit in the, or is it this one here? Um, MCO Mocap Basics. So this is also available from the uh, Epic Store. So 
So I'll just type MCO, MOCAP Basics, and it's as you might think it is. It's just a bunch of FBX files, really. Uh, but they're already ready um, inside UEF. And then so I had to do the same thing, had to retarget and send them to my characters. Um, like I mentioned before, let's see, animation, mobility pro in place. All right, so let's say jogging in place or walking in place. So this is, you know, this is what I used when they got out of the car at the Cadillac Ranch. And I just, again, retargeted this. Um, to the metahumans so that they could walk. So remember that shot? It's at the beginning. I don't need to show you. Remember when they're walking to go look at the cars? So that was just using them. Uh, you know what? I will show you though how it is used. Just That's why you're watching this video, right? To see how it's all done. Uh, it's not as hard as you might think. Where's my map? So Cadillac Ranch, reload that map. Let's not save anything. So once you load a new map in general, you have to tell it, I mean, this this is the map, but to load a particular shot, you need to load that from your um, list of level sequences. So where are we at? Cadillac Ranch. So this shot here, CR01, and hit play. Right, oh, so we got to look through my camera. All right, so this shot here, they're just walking along. Not very exciting. And then the boy's also probably on a wrong cycle. Let's actually take a look and see what I did use. So here's MetaHuman 4, um, MH, walk, look around, oh, MH, I just, these, these are my own keywords when I redid it for, uh, um, when I did the retargeting. MetaHuman walk, let's see what the uh, boy is doing, <laughs> running. Uh, so this, I think, is, that was earlier, I think just to go over yet another source of uh, handy um, assets you can use is there's a site called Mixamo. Mixamo has a bunch of, let me see if I can get this site loaded up real quick here. Mixamo has a bunch of motion capture. A lot of it's kind of gamey, like people running and getting shot and, you know, diving and stuff. Um, I'm loading it on another tab here for you really quick just to show you what it is uh, but you can retarget it to any of your um, you know it, there's some trickery involved it's not quite plug-and-play uh, but it's not that bad um, it, again it just involves a lot of that retargeting so you would just pick which um, you know you would pick the animation that you want it goes on to whichever character you're choosing these are all their characters and then uh, you just do download, downloads an FBX file, and then you import that into Unreal and uh, send it to your, your character. So that's what I think the boy is doing in that shot. And there's a, another one, you know, in the short where he's running backwards. I think, uh, I think I used one from in here as well for that. Um, oh, one, of, one of these. I don't know which one offhand. <laughs> but look, they're all like backward rifle run, uh, injured running, so. Definitely very game centric, but I used it quite a bit for mine. It was very handy. Um, oh, and his trip and fall. That was definitely a blend of Mixamo. Um, I should show you because that involves a couple animations, which is nice. To, if you don't know, uh, you can do that in um, Unreal, which is really handy. So here I have the boy, and oh, that was all trip. Okay. Um, what's one where? Well,. I have other videos where I talk about that. You can mix and match animation cycles on a character. You can have them be walking and then running and then tripping, all blended together. Uh, so what that would look like here, where you have one long, in this case it says tripping mixmo. Imagine it says walking and then slash tripping slash rolling, and then you can blend all those together. Sorry, not the best example, but you can you can imagine that, right? So I think that covers all the different sources of animation um, that was used in this uh, short. And next we'll talk about lighting and effects and editing. So there's not a whole lot to talk about as far as lighting goes in, in my project because I really ran out of time to hardly even look at it. And luckily for me, there was pretty much a drag and drop solution as I talked about before with this ultra dynamic sky really handy. I mean, again, the, you know, I mean, it's not the, not 
amazing lighting in my short in any way at all, but at least it lit the scene good enough for what I needed. So a lot of it really was just coming down here, going through some of the controls. You can set your time of day, which controls the sun, there's volumetric clouds, there's um, uh, colors, you know, it, it really was handy to just, I think really all I did, let me double check. I, I think all I did was just change intensity and let everything else do all the work. So let's say, let's see this, look at backyard B, for example. Um, let's see, for example, this shot. What is this shot? Yeah, like when they look out and see this, all I did was I brought it into, it's down here somewhere. I brought it into, the, I brought the ultra dynamic sky into sequencer. Uh, I set a key at intensity of three because the default was one and I set the time of day just to get the shadows going in the way I wanted and then I did nothing else. All of this came for free with the, uh, well, again, free meaning I didn't do anything. I just paid 30 bucks and I got everything I needed really handy for speed purposes. As far as interiors go, I mean, in, I can't even remember what I did. Maybe you even had some lights built in, but if not, um, I threw in some you know, there's point lights. There was a scene in Cadillac Ranch where she was kind of dark because the way the shadow was. So I just threw in a uh, rect light. You know, so a lot of these, anybody who does lighting, you're kind of used to all these. I was originally using this HDRI plugin, um, but once I got my Ultra Dynamic Sky, I gave that the boot and then used the Ultra Dy Dynamic Sky for everything in the whole short, everything exterior. And then interior, I just threw in some lights, I think, wherever I needed them. Uh, let's look at the fire briefly, because there's some lighting effect that comes from that, actually. The fire was yet another uh, gift from the marketplace, so this random thing called M5V, M5VFX. Uh, where'd it go here? So back here, M5VFX, will that find what I... Um, sure. Well, it looks like I own this one, so this must be the one I, I grabbed. So this was a, again, a project that I, uh, actually, I think I just imported it directly into my, my scene. And so, where is it here? Um, if I look at this, it, can, it comes with, you know, some maps, so you can kind of see what is all the different, uh, mo most things you get come with this, so you can load up. Uh, a map. It's like shopping, you know, you can, it's so handy, you're like, hmm, which fire do I want? You can find one that you want, and then you can additionally tweak it. So then I was able to drag and drop uh, the one I wanted into the fireplace. So that's in the first floor map. And so then the fire is over here, right? So there's the fire. It came in actually a little raging, so uh, I had to make some tweaks to it. Uh, let me hit G to hide all those little uh, game control stuff. So in this uh, fire mesh here, if I uh, go take a look at it. All right, so here is the uh, blueprints for that. And where did I modify um, settings for that? I did that down here, Doo -doo -doo. particle fire. Let's take a look here. That's that guy. That's that. Okay, there we go. Uh, you can have full control over, um, you know, like for example, I turned off the uh, I turned off the smoke. It's kind of hard to see, but um, there was lots of smoke. There were some embers shooting off all over into the living room. So yeah, I didn't I didn't need that in my fireplace. So turned that off. Turn that off, and I turned off the smoke. Smoke doesn't read here, but boy, did it read in the living room. Uh, and then uh, use this new element inside my fireplace to get that little guy there. And I had to scale it down because, again, it was like sticking outside the the uh, the walls. Um, and it comes with oh, I should have left that other one up, but it comes with some lights built in, so you get some flicker uh, on the character in the shot when it's the close up of him on the second shot. Uh, it re I, I boosted up the intensity, but it reads that um, you get some fire flicker on them, so that was pretty handy. As far as rendering, I think that covers most of the stuff I want to talk about in the scene. 
So as far as rendering went, um, I actually there is a tool called Movie Render Queue. Uh, I did most of mine not using that the first pass just to get a decent output so I knew everything was working. So primarily what I would do is, let's see, this is the living room. Let me show you the two different interfaces. So I would, originally I was doing the thing I'm teaching sometimes where you make a master sequence and put all the shots in there, but I found I was making so many changes of frame length and such and timing of acting that I really just went shot by shot. So I would bring up a shot, double check it, hit the render button here and make sure my target, I'd send it to a whole bunch of, you know, I have different folders for each shot as their own folder and then I'd output some PNGs. I set that somewhere around here. Somewhere, somewhere. Oh yeah, right here. And then uh yeah, I tried some anti-alias second time around. And then uh then I'd capture the movie, output that and then bring it into Premiere where I would do all my actual editing with the audio. I didn't I use the audio in here sometimes just as a reference, uh, but really all the the heavy editing was in Premiere. Now there is that tool like I mentioned called the uh, movie render queue. You won't have it by default. You need to go um, add it as a plugin. So go to edit plugins and add movie render queue. It does a similar concept, but then you have a lot of. Uh, let me just grab a shot here. Um, there's a valid real shot. Those are all left over from when you do the facial acting. Uh, so say I have a shot like this, I want to render it. It grabs the map and the sequence and then you can, what's nice is you can, uh, so you go to settings here, you can add tons of anti-aliasing, customizing, you can add uh, some different passes, you can add EXRs, you can, um, again I didn't use this a whole, oh you can do control uh, console variables which is a bunch of stuff that uh, like command line tweaks and Anyway, you have a lot more control. This is probably going to be the way we really use it. Yeah, this is the better way to get images. I just didn't have time to get that into it. But um, either way, kind of quote works for outputting images. So that, I think, is most of the, the stuff I wanted to talk about as far as how this short got put together and that it really wasn't horribly... I mean, when you look at this, you're like, did you make all that? Nope. I grabbed it off from the uh, launcher, which was quite handy. So I probably could have found some more free stuff if I dug around, but you know, when you have when you have limited time, you really also do just want to get the job done. So that, hence, hence a few purchases every now and then. But was, I'm happy to have paid for somebody else to do all that lighting for me for the sky, because I don't have time for all that. So if you have any questions, let me know. But yeah, it was a really great experience. I suggest anybody just start grabbing some stuff and making some shorts. It's really fun. Cheers.